And because we're, we have link cloaking in place, uh, in fact, I'll disclose it, we're not. We're doing a lot of breastfeeding um, strategies. And because we have link cloaking in place, if Instagram views the website, we redirect them to a breastfeeding charity um, where there's like a donation page and we're talking about raising awareness for breastfeeding and for everyone else, they're going to get redirected to, to the OF profile. So, uh, and that's how we've been able to um, not get so many accounts banned. So another thing that I've been working with quite a lot is called Wi-Fi Map. It's a community where you can upload passwords to public Wi-Fi's and so if, I, if I'm in Paris, for example, uh, I can see my exact location. These are all the passwords that, that it has. So like in my travels, whenever I'm like out and about, I just see so many people asking like, can you get me the password of the Wi-Fi? And this is just so much more convenient um, as, a way to, as a way to operate. Like you don't need to ask anyone for anything. Of course you can if you wanna make conversation or something, but there's passwords for literally everywhere here. Um, and it also tells you like the Wi-Fi um, speed. So, and you can, you can also download the map to be offline. So if I travel to a specific country, I can download the entire, um, all the Wi-Fi passwords in that specific country. So whenever I'm walking around, if for whatever reason I haven't got Wi-Fi, um, I can just, uh, I have all the passwords saved. Uh, another thing that I'll introduce you to, I think hopefully most of you are aware of this, but like eSIMs. So Wi-Fi Map also does offer an eSIM, but you can also use like different services. Uh, so if you're traveling to new countries, like you never need to buy um, a physical SIM card anymore. Uh, I use something called Aerelo uh, and also Nomad, um, depending on what country I'm in and what different offers they have but you, you just have the app on your phone, you press a few buttons uh, to choose what country you want the eSIM for, and, um, and it will install on your phone automatically and you will have an internet connection in that country. Um, so a few little travel hacks for, uh, for those of you who are living a nomadic lifestyle. Um, another thing that I've been using a lot is, uh, well not even using, it's just an automation that I built, but uh, an app called Keyboard Maestro that works for Mac. And one of my favorite automations that I built is when I put on my AirPods uh, that automatically connect to, to the Mac, when Keyboard Maestro detects this, it will automatically open Spotify and start a specific playlist. So instead of me needing to have like a particular, like just kind of removing any of the steps for me getting into like a flow state, I, I put on the headphones and immediately it goes to my focus playlist and it starts playing it without me doing anything. So simple, but really, really nice automation. I also built out something similar. Like I said, I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks, and now when I connect my AirPods to my phone, this is just done through Apple shortcuts. It will automatically start playing through audio, uh, Audible, but I've also been using the Apple Books app. Um, I've actually become a fan of their kind of UX. Unfortunately, neither of them have any integrations to Readwise or to being able to like export any notes, which is, um, is quite annoying. I'd really like to see that change, but um, yeah. A uh, final thing that I will say is I've been working like f mainly from my Notion notes section. So previously I used to do a lot of the different like dashboards and different sections within my Notion system, have different dashboards for different things and different areas in my life. And whilst I'm not against that, I do feel that you can end up with kind of like a bloated system.